Hi. In response to many questions about doing critical values and p-values and things like that, we're going to make a special little video here just to kind of help us walk through that one more time. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, taking a look at a sample problem from Chapter 8, testing a claim about a mean, and it says using the table of values, or you could use your software, which of course is the way we're going to choose. You want to find a range of values for the p-value for a two-tailed test with n is 15, and the test statistic is 1.779. Now, the reason that this question says range of values is because if you're only using a table and perhaps you're missing some particular t-values as your sample size increases, you could only provide a range or a pretty close guesstimate of what p would be. But with software, we can find the exact amount. So we're going to click Calculate and we're going to click T. We're going to enter our degrees of freedom, which would be 14 in this particular case. And the test statistic is 1.779. So first of all, we're going to pick greater than because obviously it's a positive test statistic, 1.779. And we're going to click Compute. Now, this is the probability of getting a value more extreme than that in the upper tail. So 0 0.48, <clears throat> excuse me, about 4.8%. However, this is a two-tailed test, which means because the t distribution is symmetric, you would double that. And so we'd be looking at about 9.6%, which means you would be choosing A for that answer. Now in B, it says use technology to find the p-value for a two-tailed test with n is 14, test statistic 3.243. Same idea. We're going to change this to 13. We're going to put in 3.343. We're going to click Compute. But now again, this is a one-tailed test value. And they are asking us for two tails. And it wants to round to four decimal places. So we're going to put 0 0.0026. And 0 0.0026 again, and add those together. So then we would come here and enter 0 0.0052. Now, if it was a one-tailed test, we would have simply entered 0 0.0026. This particular one, of course, asks us to go on and do a test. So we're going to kind of bypass that one right now. Same idea here. Again, significance, you know, p-value is already given here, 0 0.0119. But if, for example, you were asked to find the critical value for this problem, Good question. So first we would enter a sample size, which is 48. And we would take a look at the question, is this a one or two-tailed test? Now, because this is a one-tailed test, because they are, we are testing if the mean is less, we're going to switch this to less. And we're going to take a look. The significance level is 0 0.01. So if the software asked us to determine the significance value, it would be any t that was below negative 2.40658 would be significant. You'll notice we have negative 2.33. Our p-value, of course, is 1.19%, which is not below 0 0.01. So we would fail to reject HO. On number five, if we were asked to find critical values, as it states here after the p-value, um, in other words, what are the cutoff points for those extreme values for testing the claim? If it's equal, not equal, so this is a two-tailed test. We have 33 of the degrees of freedom. And we want to put half of the error at either end. So each end is going to have 0 0.025. So any t value below and negative 2.03 or above a positive 2.03. Remember that your t distribution is symmetric. So again, negative 2.0345 and positive 2.0. 2.0345 would be your critical values. Number six, to find critical values, we're testing the claim if it's less. So again, we'd be switching to less. And we would be entering our degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom is 24 in this particular case. And then it says 0 0.05. So all of that error is at one end. So any computed t value less than negative 1.71, we would reject. And again, you're going to go through and use the software to compute your p-value. And as long as your p-value is less than 0 0.05, it would fall down in this area and we would reject. That's a different way of looking at it. This is what's known as the classical method, finding the critical value and looking for your t-computed t-statistic to be less. Or you would use the p-value, which of course is faster if you have software. Number seven says to, again, find critical values. Um, here we have n is 15, so your degrees of freedom would be 14. 
and we would be looking to see if it's greater, so we'd be clicking greater than, one tail test, because it's greater than queen, enter queen 0, 5, and our critical t would be 1.76. Now, that's all fine and dandy if we are dealing with testing a mean, or of course if we were testing a hypothesis about a proportion, we would use a z to get the calculator. But what if we are looking at testing a claim about standard deviation? So let's take a look at one of these. Okay, so we're going to pull this over here and put this in next to stat crunch and we're going to take a look. So now let's look at the type of question. What if it asks me the critical values for this problem that has to do with the standard deviation? So this particular one is one similar to one we had in homework. Because this problem is about standard deviation, we're going to choose the chi-squared test. The mean and the claim of the calibrating, and we're determining that the standard is a certain amount, is there significant so to conclude that it's decreased. So we're looking at less than. The degrees of freedom in this case is 22, because our sample is size 23. And again, at the bottom end of this distribution, we're going to put in point zero or point, point one zero. All of the error goes at one end because this is a one-tailed test. So our critical value for chi-squared would be 14.01. Keep in mind if this were a two-tailed test, then you would do 0 0.05 at the bottom, you would do 0 0.05 at the top by switching the value here. Remember that a chi-squared is not symmetric. You cannot enter the same value for top and bottom. Hope you find this helpful. And hope the rest of that test goes well. Good luck.